Good evening and thank you for tuning in to Ashland Tonight News. Today is Thursday, October 23rd, and here is a look at your top stories. If you have thought about showing a video to other students, you may want to think again. Find out why the tech crew had to cancel the showings of a few movies. And Ashland University is celebrating Community Service Week. Find out what they've been doing and how you can be a part of the next service event. The second annual Sidewalk Chalk Festival was this weekend. Stay tuned to see footage from these professional and beginning artists. And one lucky professor from the Arts and Science Building has just been awarded. Stay tuned to hear more. I'm Brittany Lee. And I'm Giselle Eptograph. It's all coming up next, only on Ashland Tonight News. <laughs> for joining us. If you are planning on showing a movie to, on campus to the public, you may want to reconsider. Student organizations were warned earlier this week that it is illegal to show a movie for the campus without a license. Over the past week, there have been four documented potential violations of the public performance law on campus. Showing movies on campus without a license may result in a violation that can cost the university as much as $20,000 in fines and legal issues. This rule does not apply to professors who show movies for educational purposes. If your organization wishes to receive a license, they may do so. However, this title license may range in cost between $200 and $400. If you have any questions or would like to apply for a license, contact the Office of Student Activities at extension 5325. AU Service Week continues with tonight's Adopt-A-Grandparent at the Good Shepherd Nursing Home. If you are interested, please meet in the mailroom at 6.50 p.m. Students may also sign up for the dog walking at the Ashland County Animal Shelter on Friday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Your last chance to get involved in Service Week is this Saturday's Make a Difference Day. There will be various opportunities throughout the community, including leaf raking for senior citizens and the Habitat for Humanity team build. Delta Zeta will also be collecting cans all week for their trick-or-treat Help Someone Eat. Please help out by leaving non-perishable food items in the boxes located in the dorms and the student center. Two Ashland University professors are receiving recognition for their work done in the Catholic community. John and Dorothy Stratton were named the 2008 Michael Birkin Peace and Justice Award winners. The award was given by the Catholic Commission of Wayne, Ashland, and Medina Counties. Both recipients are professors in the College of Arts and Sciences. The Strattons have dedicated much of their time to volunteering at the Ashland County Center for Nonviolence and to the Ashland County Health Services Incorporated. The criteria for this award required that individuals demonstrate a strong commitment to justice and harmony with biblical values. The Strattons were awarded this honor for being catalysts for peace and for being a part of social justice in health care and for launching organizations impacting lives in those of the region. The Strattons will receive the award on November 7th at 6 p.m. at the 22nd Annual Harvest of Justice Gala Dinner. The event will take place at the Sacred Heart of Parish Hall in Wadsworth. The event is open to the public. For information, call 330-263-6176. The Concrete Academic Corridor at Ashland University has become the canvas of professional, amateur, and beginner artists at the second annual Ashland Sidewalk Chalk Festival, hosted by AU's Auxiliary Services. The festival took place this weekend. The corridor was marked off into 34 rectangles in which families, clubs, students, and businesses helped transform the walkway into colorful masterpieces using chalk. In addition, visitors found musical entertainment, a henna ink artist, characterist, and backyard grilling to add to the extravaganza. One AU professor's work will be hitting the shelf soon. Assistant Professor, professor of Education at AU's Columbus Center, Dr. Rosari Ifredi, recently had her book published titled African-Born Woman Faculty in the United States, Lives in Contradiction. 
The book includes a study done on nine African-born female participants. It documents their struggles as belonging to a minor minority and showcases their success and ability to overcome even the most difficult situations. Ifedi is a native of Nigeria who now resides in Columbus with her family. She received the idea for the book after speaking with other African-born faculty members. The book is being published by Mel Press and is available through the Ashland University Bookstore, the publisher, and Internet Book Resources. On Wednesday, October 8th, an Ashland University resident student reported that she witnessed an altercation in the Clayton parking lot between two unidentified individuals. According to the student, one of the individuals had a gun. The student reported the person with the gun ran down King Road toward the Garmin Street area. The Ashland City Police were notified and responded to get a statement from the witness. If anyone has information that may help identify the two subjects involved in the altercation, please notify the Safety Services Office at 419-289-5766 or call the Ashland City Police at 419-289-3639. A Mansfield mother is found competent to stand trial after trying to harm her infant child. And the AU Jazz Orchestra hosted their very first concert. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned because it's all coming up next only on Ashland Tonight News. What do a store owner, a mother of two, and an honor student have in common? They've all recovered from a mental health problem, and they're all part of our lives. Mental health problems are surprisingly common. They affect almost every family in America, maybe even yours. Get the facts about mental health. Call 1-800-789-2647, because mental health is part of all our lives. No matter what type of home renovation you're planning, put this at the top of your to-do list. Make sure your family is up to date on the tetanus vaccine, because after 10 years, none of you are protected against tetanus and another potentially fatal disease, diphtheria. A minor injury, such as a cut or a scrape, can put you at risk for a tetanus infection. And while safety gear offers some protection, an up-to-date vaccination called the TD Booster is your best insurance against tetanus. If it's been more than 10 years since your last booster, then it's not just your house that's out of date, it's you. If it's been 10, do it again. Talk to your health care provider to find out if it's time for a TD Booster or visit NFID.org. AU has been awarded research grant from the National Institutes of Health, or NIH. This $143,750 grant, known as the Academic Research Enhancement Award, is intended to help undergraduate students conduct scientific research. AU's Dr. Douglas Dawson, professor of biology, prepared the application and will oversee the research. For the next three summers, two AU students will conduct toxicity research. The grant covers the student's salaries, cost of equipment and materials, and travel fees for conferences and presentation of final findings. Ashland University's Jazz Orchestra held a concert on October 19th in the Eagle's Nest, located in the Hawkins Conard Student Center. The performance kicked off at 7.30 and showcased songs recently performed on the group's trip to Spain. Songs included works from big bands such as Count Bossy and Duke Ellington. The event was free and open to the public.
A professional development seminar will be held at AU on November 5th in Shar. Sponsored by the Ohio Association of College and University Business Officers, the program will be presented by Bill Jellen, known as Mr. Excel. It will begin at 9.30 a.m. with Preparing for Excel 2007, a session about Excel's newest features. The second session begins at 12.20 p.m. and will offer a discussion of Advanced Data Analysis using Microsoft Excel. Registration is due tomorrow. Further information can be found at www.oacubo.org. These past few days have been quite chilly. Is it time to bring out the scarves and gloves? Well, stay tuned to hear from our very own Leland weatherman Gottlieb, and let's see if this chilly front is here to stay. We'll be right back. Every day, someone is being bullied, and every day, someone else is a bully. It can happen anywhere at any time, and it has become one of your child's greatest fears. There is no profile of a bully. Bullies come in all shapes and sizes, and so do the people they bully. Having a daily conversation with your child and staying in touch may be the key to bully prevention. Find out how you can help by calling for free information. Make time to listen. Take time to talk about bullying. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. We have seen the faces of suffering in Sudan in Darfur. Hundreds of thousands killed. More than two million people torn from their homes, exiles in their own country forced into camps of hunger and isolation. But we have seen the strength of a mother's hands. We have seen the hope in a child's face. Catholic Relief Services is on the ground, in the camps, providing the basics of life, food, water, shelter. The need is urgent. The choice we face is simple. Watch as another chapter of tragedy is added to human history, or act now to stop the dying and keep alive the promise of a better future. Millions of Sudanese still wait for their stories to end with hope. That hope begins with you. Find out how you can help at helpcrs.org slash Darfur. Welcome back to Ashland Tonight News. I am Leland the weatherman Gottlieb bringing you, yes, Ashland's weather. Well, I know all of you had to get out early this morning to get that frost off your car, and it looks like that will occur tomorrow, too. So let's get to the maps, and I'll explain to you why this is occurring. We have a high-pressure system up to the north, which is pushing down some Canadian, Canadian air, excuse me, and it looks like it will remain here for the next few days. However, with that, we have a potent low-pressure system, which is moving in our direction. It looks like behind it, there is even some snow showers, but it may be warm enough here that we won't see that quite yet. Now let's get to those temperatures and see how far they have moderated throughout today. Well, we saw temperatures start out in the low 30s and even upper 20s in some areas. However, down in Cleveland, we're sitting at 58 degrees, so it's moderated pretty nicely. Here at Ashland, we're sitting at 53 degrees, so it's pretty cool. Lastly, let's take a look at that Friday forecast and see what will happen with this pretty potent low pressure system. It's going to be moving in exactly in our direction, actually. However, it looks like it will weaken because if you can see down to the south in the Gulf of Mexico, there is another low pressure system which will form and suck all the energy out of this, and this moisture will move along the coast and miss Ohio pretty much. Now let's take a look at that all-important three-day forecast. As I said, we will see some showers with this low pressure system. However, it won't be a washout at any means any of the weekend. And then Sunday, it looks like we will rebound with clear skies and see a high of 57 degrees. That's all I have for weather. Here's Greg with sports. Thanks, Lee. I'm Greg Smith. Now it's time to get a look at your Ashland University sports. On Saturday, the Eagle football team came home for family weekend to battle the Cardinals of Saginaw Valley State in a key GLIAC matchup. The Eagles jumped out early, po posting 24 points, giving them a 24-0 advantage at the end of the first half. A season-ending injury to All-American running back DeJuan Harvey slowed the high-octane offense of the Eagles but the in the second half, but AU was able to hang on for an exciting 31-28 victory. 
Quarterback Billy Cundiff had another fantastic day, finishing 18 of 26 for 246 yards and two touchdowns. Wide receiver Nick Belanco led the receiving core with nine receptions for 137 yards and two touchdowns. In replacement to DeWan Harvey, Damaris McCoy and Carlin Isles racked up 88 yards and a touchdown. The AU defense was back to its old style of play, forcing two Saginaw turnovers and holding the Cardinals offense out of the end zone on the final drive of the game. Senior linebacker Tom Brenner led the team with 14 total tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble. The Eagles now travel to Allendale, Michigan to face off against the number one ranked Grand Valley State University Lakers in what could be considered the game of the year in the conference. The men's soccer team looked to bounce back after their first tie of the season when they traveled to Northwood and Saginaw Valley State. The Eagles lost their first match of the season 3-1 to to the Timberwolves of Northwood, but were able to bounce back and win at Saginaw Valley in an overtime goal by Tom Magnotic. The AU men's soccer team followed that up with a win, followed that win up with their second loss of the year to Mount Vernon. They now stand at 13-2-1 and rank second in the region. This week, they welcome Tiffin and Finley to Ashland University. The women's soccer team traveled to Michigan with the men and just like them split their two matches. The Lady Eagles defeated Northwood 1-0 in overtime on an own goal and followed with a 5-1 loss at Saginaw Valley. They host Tiffin and Finley this week. The Ashland volleyball team traveled to Indianapolis this weekend for the GLIAC GLVC Challenge. The Lady Eagles flexed their conference muscle and defeated Quincy, University of Wisconsin Parkside, St. Joseph's, and Missouri S&T en route to an undefeated weekend. They now host Tiffin and Finley this weekend back at Cage Gymnasium. The AU women's tennis team looked to continue their past success this week. The Lady Eagles fell to Grand Valley State 8-1, but bounced back and defeated Fair State 6-3. The next day, they now, they now sit with a 9-3 record heading into the GLIAC Championships this weekend. And finally, the AU men's and women's swim team started their season off right. The men and women's team defeated rival Finley and cruised by Urbana and Hillsdale this past weekend. Both teams will now look forward to a tri-meet with Indianapolis, Wayne State, and Truman State next weekend. That's all we have for a busy week in Ashland sports. Be sure to head out to all the Ashland University sporting events this upcoming weekend. But if you can't make it to the game, come check it out back here on TV2. Up next is Victoria with your health report. Stay tuned. These are poor coal mining communities where there's no jobs and no health care. Last year we had 7,000 people, so we know it's needed. Instead of being stationary in one clinic, we bring this clinic to eight communities. People appreciate so much that we're able to be there with them in a moment of crisis. And that is a gift which keeps me on the road and keeps me going. Have you saved a life today? I took two flood victims to a shelter. I donated a day's pay to help a family that lost everything in a fire. Have you saved a life today? I teach a class in infant CPR. I donated a pint of blood. Have you saved a life today? No, but today somebody saved mine. The American Red Cross. Together, we can save a life. My dad fixed things for everyone. Whose names we never hear Reaching out to help their fellow man And me? There are dreamers Well, I just held the light. Who are making dreams come true Taking time to teach the children There's nothing they can't do All it takes is a over the years, we fixed things for friends we knew, and some we didn't. He was teaching me more than just how to fix things. Teaching by example. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Thank you, Greg. I'm Victoria Venata with your weekly dose of health. The government has approved the first non-invasive brain stimulator to treat depression, a device that beams magnetic pulses through the skull. The Food and Drug Administration approved Neurotics Inc. in Neurostar therapy specifically for patients who had no relief from their first antidepressant, offering them a different option 
then trying pill after pill. The FDA cleared the prescription only Neurostar based on data that found patients did modestly better when treated with TMS than when they unknowingly received a sham treatment that mimicked the magnet. TMS is expected to cost $6,000 to $10,000 depending on how many treatments the patient needs. TMS also is being studied in stroke rehabilitation and other brain disorders. The Neurostar beams about 3,000 pulses a minute during a 40-minute treatment done about five times a week for up to six weeks. TMS did prove to be very safe. Patients in the Neurostar study suffered no seizures or memory problems. The main complaint was headaches. Hand, foot, and mouth disease has killed three children and sickened about 110 others in eastern China. The report stated that the children who died from the infectious disease were under a year old and came from different towns. 22 of the infected children were still hospitalized for treatment. The provincial government has sent eight epidemic prevention experts to eastern China to help the local medical staff conduct citywide checks on children. This past spring, the spread of the virus sickened more than 24,000 people and killed dozens across China before authorities reported a slowdown of infections in May. A new study has shown children who tried drugs or alcohol before age 15 run a greater risk of being substance dependent as adults, contracting sexually transmitted diseases, dropping out of school, or being convicted of a crime. The study followed 1,037 children from the age of 3 until 32. The children were also obsessed for conduct disorders, fighting, bullying, destroying property, telling lies, truancy, and stealing before their teen years and their family history, whether either parent had a criminal record and whether the child was mistreated. The study showed children who tried alcohol or drugs early on were two to three times more likely than non-early exposed adolescents to be substance dependent, to have an early pregnancy, and to have failed to obtain educational qualifications. Children exposed to drug and alcohol before 15 also had significantly more criminal convictions than those who were not. Findings from these studies were consistent with the message that early substance use leads to significant problems in adolescents' future lives or the me message that drugs are bad for kids versus the message that young adolescents with a history of problems are just more likely to use drugs and experience poor outcomes. So we urge the young adults to think before you act. That's all I have for health. Now let's toss it over to Kelsey with entertainment. I am Kelsey Miller, and here's a look at this week's entertainment straight from Hollywood. In Hollywood political news, Bon Jovi is in an uproar because of McCain and Palin using his song lyrics, Who Says You Can't Go Home, in the Republican rallies held this week. Not only is Bon Jovi, did he not write the song for that, but now he is very appalled. Bon Jovi is an avid follower of Barack Obama and even held a fundraiser for him in New Jersey this September. Wow. Britney Spears was in court for her hit and run incident from 2007. Spears was convicted of a hitting a car, then fleeing the scene, and all of this was caught on video, which Spears was unaware of. As a result of the hit and run charges, Spears' license was taken away. Well, last Thursday, Spears was pulled over in California and did not have her license. Now she is on trial but refuses to testify due to her daddy's wishes. He said that it's unnecessary and will only cause more problems. Britt is waiting to leave California but cannot because she is still waiting on the court system for the custody of her two sons. Britney's lawyer is trying to give the custody jurors good ideas about Spears and her newly acclaimed responsibilities, but her getting pulled over is not helping. At the late night David Letterman show, there has been some controversy with politics. After McCain canceled his appearance on the David Letterman show, McCain may never be able to live it down. Letterman is constantly teasing McCain even the chance that every chance that he gets. So make sure you don't cancel and making comments frequently on his show about McCain. McCain has tried to make it up to Letterman, but McCain's attempts have been denied. A message to all guest stars, don't miss your day with David Letterman or you will never be able to forget it. 
And the top movie that bumped Beverly Hills Chihuahua to number two was Max Payne. Better to get to the theaters this weekend. There's a lot of new movies coming out tomorrow. Well, that's all for me today. And I'm Kelsey Miller, and TV2 will be right back after this break. You ask. Dad? Dad? Will you please play ball with us? No, not right now, son. I gotta finish painting. I put it off way too long already. Come on. Life's magic moments are waiting if you only try. Son, let me show you how to swing that bat. Put that off too long, too. To show them that you care. With the time you take to share So don't ever let the magic pass you by It's often life's small moments that bring the greatest memories. Don't let the magic pass you by. Don't let the magic pass you by. Don't From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And now, another fact of Congress. When you were in kindergarten, did you play well with others? How would you grade Congress? Congress deals with many difficult issues, so we should expect some disagreements. But sometimes lawmakers get a little out of hand. Incivility and rudeness make it impossible to get anything done. And when nothing gets done, the government shuts down. The result? Bad laws that affect us all. Civility doesn't mean that lawmakers have to agree with each other, just that they should respect each other. Only when lawmakers respect each other will lawmakers find common ground. When you're civil to someone else, good things happen. And that's another Act of Congress. BSU held their first open mic night in the Eagles Landing, where they showcased a variety of talents from singers, rappers, poets, and acoustic guitar performances. Along with the outstanding lineup, we had AU's very own religious life professor, Peter Slade. Now all I know, my redeemer lives. I know. this life within me sometimes and they give a brother looks to make him feel so small they want to crawl into a corner with their tail tucked in between their legs and the man the very fat man that waters the workers beer I'm the man the very fat man that waters the workers beer and what do I care if it makes them ill if it makes them terribly queer see those were the olden days and you can say that makes them terribly <laughs> queer I have a car a yacht and an aeroplane and I water the workers I'll do it again. Oh, I'm the man, the very fun man that waters the workers' beer. I'm the man, the very fun with your sign. Girl, I know you got a man, but I won't let take you home tonight. Virgo and Aries, hop in my ride. Just a bit of that Menace candle light up on the side. Posse, Gemini, baby, I just want to know your sign. Girl, I know you got a man, but I won't let take you home tonight. I might as well forget about. Forget everything that I ever knew And start all over again So I guess I might as well forget about loving you But 
but that is Don't so start from love, I didn't need the pain Once or twice was enough and it was all in vain Time starts to pass before you know it, you're frozen Woo! AU students had the opportunity to talk to executives from Westfield Insurance yesterday, October 22nd. The event was presented by the Eagle Eye Marketing Group and was held at 7 p.m. in the Myers Convocation Center. The program, titled Business Culture and Values, featured Westfield President Jim Clay and other chief officers. Westfield Insurance is one largest non-public companies in Ohio and is the largest employer in Medina County. It also was named one of North America's top small to mid-sized companies for leaders. Speakers at the program spoke of the business's insurance, banking, and related financial services group of businesses. The event was free and open to the public. A Mansfield mother was recently found competent for trial after entering a not guilty by reason of insanity plea. Cynthia Redmond, 24, is accused of giving her 11-month-old daughter a fatal dose of prescription drugs. Redmond allegedly blamed her infant for the failure of her marriage and wanted to harm her with an overdose of antidepressants. If Redmond is convicted of aggravated murder, she could receive the death penalty. The not guilty by reason of insanity plea is apparently becoming a trend in Mansfield. We sent our own TV2 reporter, Michaela Rhodes, to the streets to find out what AU students thought about this year's election and what they are going to do to get involved. Hi, I'm Michaela Rhodes, and on today's Woman on the Street, we're bringing you AU students and how they feel about the election. What's your name? Sandra. Okay, I'm sure you're aware that the election is coming up in a couple of weeks. Do you know who you're voting for? Yes, I do. Has any outside influences helped you with your pick? Um, not so much because so many people have different opinions. It's important to hold true to your own. No, unfortunately I haven't and I feel really bad about that. Are you excited to be a part of this election? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. What's your name? Brian Wyrick. Hey, are you registered to vote? Uh, not yet, but I will be. Okay, do you know who you're voting for? Yes, this is what I do. Okay, how have you been getting involved with this year's election? Well, I watched the most recent uh, presidential debate about a week or so ago, and that was actually really the first time that I had uh, spent, you know, watching any of the debates on television and so forth, and really opened up my eyes to a lot of issues that were being discussed, uh, more so on some than what I had realized. So at this point, after after watching the most recent debate, I think I have a pretty good idea at this point who I'm going to vote for. So. Jen? Okay, thank you. Hey, are you registered to vote? Yes, I am. Do you know who you're voting for? Not yet. I'm leaning more towards Obama, but I'm not 100% sure quite yet. So. Have you been doing anything to get involved? Um, I've looked on their websites, and <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Okay, so has anything influenced your um, opinion for voting for Obama? Um, I definitely think the current condition of the global economy and like the whole financial crisis, I'm definitely interested to see who's going to handle that the best. So that's probably my number one thing right now. And then just where they stand on other issues, like things like that. Nicole, okay, think are you registered to vote? Yes, I am. Do you know who you're voting for? Yes, Barack Obama. Has anything influenced your opinions? Nothing really. Get involved with the election. Um, Somewhat informing people who are not registered to vote and stuff like that and telling them about the people. Okay, thank you. Elizabeth Timmons. Matt Timmons. Are you registered to vote? Yes, we are. Yes. Um, do you know who you're voting for? Yes, I Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Has any outside sources influenced your opinions? Not me. It's from my own personal convictions. Are you doing anything to get involved with this year's election? I'm praying for it. <laughs> Same. Well, I'd like to have the most pro-life candidate in and one who's fiscally conservative. Uh, the, very much the same reasoning. Uh, uh, one who's uh, demonstrating conservative values. Okay, thank you. In July. Well, I hope everyone's planning on getting out there and voting this year. But as for TV2, what are you guys doing this weekend? Well, tonight I'm going to Chapter Presents at 9.30 in Redwood. Is everyone else going? Greg, are you going to it? I'll be there. Well, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and as for this weekend, I'm going up to Allendale, Michigan to watch Ashton pull off the biggest upset in school history. So go I'm Eagles. excited about that. <laughs> I'm going to go see the Saw 5 movie if it's not too scary. Oh, you are brave. <laughs> <laughs> not me. 
And I'm actually going with Delta Zeta trick-or-treating this Sunday. Don't forget to drop off your cans. There's boxes in all of the dorms. Yep. I'm going to go see Saw 5 too, so I'll probably Ooh. be shaking alongside this girl You guys here. are brave. Yeah. <laughs> well, my boyfriend's dragging me. It's his fault. <laughs> well, that about does it for Ashland Two Night News. We would like to say thank you to our TV2 crew, and if you're interested in helping out with Ashland's TV station, you can email us at tv2 or at ashland.edu. And don't forget to join us next Thursday at 4.30. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>